get rid of the self promotion there and let's go jump in and talk to Corey. Corey, welcome to the show. Hello. Hello, Thanks sir. Corey, uh, we we thank you for joining us. Uh, you know, Corey, uh, Corey. Let me just tell the listeners about Corey. He actually builds some. He's been building more than a decade of success with inbound marketing, and his resume includes founding of multiple multi million dollar companies built using his online marketing processes. He's our neighbor in Chicago, and he's the CEO of Northcut, the inbound marketing agency. So, Corey, tell us, a, a, give us a day, a snapshot in the day of Northcut. Oh man. It's, uh, it's a whole lot of fun. So we're a remote agency, and that means that I wake up, I commute to my coffee maker. That's incredible. I, I love that. Uh, I start my day off watching a few inspirational YouTube videos, easing the <laughs> email. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> that's good. I feel like you got to consume a little bit before you, you have anything to say. Absolutely. Uh, that's good. And, uh, yeah, I, I think I'm all over the place. I wear all of the hats. Uh, in our agency, right? Uh, being small, I think that's part of it. But I, I don't know. I, I think that I just love being hands on with things, mm-hmm. and it's really hard to let go of that. And maybe that keeps us a small agency. I, I don't know exactly, but it's just a part of it. And I just have to be hands on with writing content and helping find new ideas. Mm-hmm. So I do that all day long. I answer the sales emails. People respond to the newsletter. I respond to that. And Very cool. Yeah, it's very go. hands-on. Absolutely. So, so it's a big coffee maker. It's a big <laughs> coffee maker. That's absolutely right. So, hey, uh, how long has North Coast been in, ex- in ex- uh, existence? Wow, oh, there you go. Yeah, we. It's uh, <laughs> 2010, so six years. Oh, very. That sounds cool. right. Excellent. Yes. So, was SEO the original target service of the organization? No, uh, this was a complete accident. Uh, <laughs> I get that not, a lot, actually. I get that a lot. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I've heard it a lot too, and it's it's funny when it it kind of happens when things work out because everything good in my life, I feel like I've come into just completely ass backwards, uh, and that's just how it goes, I guess. Yep. But yep. I had a cloud provider before this that I started while I was in college, and it got pretty big, mm-hmm. um, got really big, and I had some partners. Uh, who had kind of a falling out, which, as that story almost always goes, right. uh, I don't know why we always like walk into these things expecting different. But and, and you know, there's some good <laughs> ones too. But it got crazy. I mean, we had four partners, which is just it turns into Game of Thrones for yeah, most. Yeah, it people. sure does. That's a bit. That's a bit tough, especially with a startup. Yeah. So this that's is a, more. About, that's a lot of know, sword fighting now. So <laughs> that melted down in like 2010, and I had you know some former competitors, I guess then mm-hmm. that I. Thankful I was nice to. Uh, <laughs> and they approached me before that was even done. Oh, wow. and that became everything. And they started referring me to each other. And I was lucky to know some pretty good people, I think, that pretty much made this agency for me uh, out of that. I just kind of rolled with it. Oh, that's fantastic. So, so, how did, so you, you kind of got into SEO by accident, right? Yeah. What, I mean, what, was, that, what was that first? Accident. SEO... I it was just the best opportunity I could find. Gotcha, gotcha. So what was that? What was that first SEO engagement that uh, you kind of fell into there? Uh, without giving names, how, how did you do? On, how did you fare on that first engagement? Sure. Well, I mean, we've got a case study up on our website of our first client, which uh-huh. was uh, a company called Nexus. Mm-hmm. They're in uh, Detroit, Michigan. They're, if not the largest, one of the largest uh, hosts of Magento. So. Huh. We've we've been really big with that. We've worked with them for five years now. Uh, they're our best case study, I think, like I mentioned. And we we run their entire marketing department, really. But it began just as simple SEO. Uh-huh. Uh, the founder of that company, Chris Wells, had mentioned, you know what, we don't really have anyone doing this yet. Uh, I've seen that what you were doing when I was competing with you. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I used some of the software he wrote, too. So he had a kind of an inside look in our company. Sure. Uh, so we took that, and now it's been five years. Uh, went from I think like thirty to one hundred and thirty employees there. They've been on the Inc. like top fifty telecoms uh, all five years. So it's just it's been phenomenal. And our our big SEO wins there are, are maybe obvious. I mean, you search for Magento hosting, they're number one. Mm-hmm. Uh, they host Expression Engine, they're number one for Expression Engine hosting. Oh wow! Uh, so yeah, anything we could win for them, we have won, and that's been amazing. And now we we maintain and we grow and we do content marketing. Uh, and everything that surrounds it. Very good. So your first engagement was a, a huge success. 
Yes, ball out of the park. Beautiful. That's and that's the story I don't usually hear. No. <laughs> um, very cool. Well, um, there's so much to cover in in what we wanted to talk to you about. Uh, we wanted to get into first and foremost e-commerce SEO. Uh, sure. you, re- you ready to kind of go a couple rounds here? Sounds good. Fantastic. Well, okay. Well, the first thing I want to do is actually kind of offer up you uh, this uh, like an open open book for you uh, give us some of your your key concepts on 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 some of the challenges of e-commerce seo and some of your what you think would are our winning strategies in, in that regard sure and you can and, and as, as little or as much as you want to go into yeah so i guess with e-commerce it's it's unique and we always find one major mistake every time which is i installed my e-commerce software i loaded it with my products and Google just hates it right? because every page essentially looks almost exactly the same. You've got yep. the same little product photo, the same structure of price, and there's not much there. Mm-hmm. So the biggest challenge I've found, especially in a large e-commerce site, is to get rid of, I don't want to say duplicate content because if I defer back to you know that Google ranking factors from earlier, there's a lot of factors that really matter mm-hmm. with having a lot of really substantive, unique content um, even if it's not exactly duplicated, to go in and do something special with each page. So that might mean writing really extended, unique bios. It mm-hmm. might just mean custom writing a meta description. Uh, I know Matt Cutts has said, like, you are okay having a machine-generated meta description, but you don't really want that still. Mm-hmm. And I, I paraphrase that last part. You don't. If you look at any studies, you want to customize everything so the, the 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 concept of this machine generated meta descriptions i mean and google can certainly understand and parse through the code and be able to compare okay these are patterns that are being developed or page by page by page getting in there and actually you know spot welding the unique unique description i mean literally it, it is a it's a challenge and it's all right especially if you have 18,000 pro- mm-hmm. projects or something like that but those yes. those are the key factors that google's paying attention to they know it's an e-commerce engine they know there's a it's a template template based site structure so anything that you can break from the template itself is going to be even more highly valued it's help yeah and you're not going to get penalized for not doing it sure absolutely but- it's it's value, and that's something that they really try to appraise in any number of ways. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, what are your thoughts about uh, duplicate product descriptions? Um, it, it, it is worth worth writing out new descriptions for your product, but what about if it's product from the manufacturers, right? And right. I mean, you know, there's so much duplication that's out there. I mean, already loading up your products, you're kind sure. of yeah, and I think there was a what the question's based on is there was a thread. Uh, mm-hmm. John Mueller said that re- rewriting those descriptions aren't exactly critical for SEO. Mm-hmm. Sure. So it, well, I I tend to agree, disagree with that, but <laughs> well, and I've got a maybe an overall question there because if we're take a regular content site compared to an e-commerce site, right? On a regular site, you know, especially I think some of the analysis like by Backlinko and stuff is that a page, not necessarily the targeted content you know like html5 body or Mm. whatever but is like over a thousand words right well if you have a product description it's pretty hard to write a thousand there's no way you can do it right and then you have variations and yeah and so i'd I'd love to hear kind of your you know experience with that you know is is it you know definitely a unique Mm. 200 300 word or (laughs) you know what do you what do you or is it just Hey, try to grab all the specifics, throw mm-hmm. them on different tabs. Like, yeah. Just, sure. yeah. you know, I'd love to hear more uh, of your insight on that. Yeah, I'm familiar with that study too, and I'm I don't I'm a big critic of correlation studies because yeah. obviously correlation is not causation. the The best alternative to my own Google ranking factors, I think, is Moz's Google ranking factors, which is mm-hmm. all correlation and surveys, and mm-hmm. it it provides good insights that I couldn't from the angle that I came from, mm-hmm. but I just kind of question what value that really has in in reality, where each ver- vertical is going to be different in the case of an e-commerce mm-hmm. site. I think that you could still probably draw an interesting correlation study that was just focused on maybe a specific vertical's mm-hmm. product pages uh, and see how they are. Because I, I don't think they would be anywhere near a thousand pages, and I don't think you need it. Uh, right, so right, that's and, good I, point. and I agree with you. And, and I think when I read like the fine print. <laughs> it was page word count. And mm-hmm. that's where I think they, like one of the things that I don't like about that, if you look at, you know, like 
one of your pages, right? Right. How many sure. how many pieces are in the header, sidebar, footer? You know, it's all are, word count. that are common. Right. Right. You know, and the actual meat of the content, you know, might be three hundred yeah. words. And it's very something. difficult to have that type of correlative value whenever you're dealing with different pages that have yeah. different inset type of content. You can't. I mean, it's it's got to be the bulk content of the pages. There's no way to to zero in on exactly. This is the body description of these. 100 different websites right, right? because they're all different right. and the coding's different i mean i don't know but i don't know of a tool that can actually zero in on just those data sets with yeah, with with, yeah. with, 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 with with precision you just can't do it totally um so uh, what is uh, you know let, let's let's dive a little bit deeper into i mean because i mean the essence of the e-commerce seo challenge is the product yeah uh-huh. right and so we're, we're talking about the, 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 the manual opportunity to change unique product variables um, in this entire template system, right? So, again, it, it's platform-specific. Some e-commerce are, are just not going to even give you the latitude to be able to do that. And we know some of those cars. Those cars have, have fallen to the wayside, right? <laughs> but, yes. Hopefully, so some of them are still hanging around. <laughs> um, but uh, in your opinion, what is the best CMS for an e-commerce website from the SEO standpoint? Sure, uh, Magento has never done me wrong. I think it's the biggest, mm-hmm. the most popular. Um, I honestly, I think that's that would be my go-to. Quite honestly, yeah. if it's something that the brand is serious about taking to the next level mm-hmm. and maintaining and actually being successful with, mm-hmm. that's the way to go. We we give thumbs up on Magento as well. Um, there's scalability opportunity inside of Magento, um, and it's it's a strong SEO tool. Um, there are some higher echelon e-commerce tools out there uh, that that kind of eclipse at least from a price point. Yes, uh, Magento. Now, I mean, usually price signifies quality, right? Sometimes, yeah. Like I think, <laughs> I think like one of the there's things, a big ass asterisk right there. I'm the asterisk. <laughs> well, the, one of the things is like SKU count. You know, with Magento, obviously you can't go wrong. You know, if you've got a thousand or more SKUs, you know, right. I would sure. not want to manage that in like a WooCommerce, no, you know, no. system or anything like but that. But WooCommerce, you brought it up. WooCommerce gives you a heck of a lot more control over the optimization value of those pages. I think they're, I, I think if you're good with Magento, you can yep. equally create it. Like you can make a template exactly the mm-hmm. same, mm-hmm. you know, in, in both. But, uh, but I, 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 I kind of, I, I look at his stages and then the other one is simplicity, right? You know, we have some people that are selling 10 things mm-hmm. and it's like, okay, just go do Shopify. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Get out of here. yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I want to optimize for the one product that I have. Yeah. Make a landing page. <laughs> here's, here's Wix. Yeah. Knock yourself yeah. out. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, he said that. <laughs> All right. Now we got to put a disclaimer on the show. <laughs> So, uh, speaking of, I mean, Corey, well, which ones, which which shopping carts should uh, individuals that are trying to market product and, and and roll out the online e-commerce? What should they avoid? Oh man, uh, I haven't used any recently that I just hated. Uh, so I may not be the best one to speak to that if, if I'm being totally honest. But I have seen a lot of content management systems over the years, especially. Right. Being from the web hosting world before that, and just you start playing with something, and you realize like you just can't do like separate title tags or like this is basic stuff, but you don't have the features necessary to do something really, really central. Yep. Um, I, I think if I could give any useful advice, it would be to make a checklist of what you're definitely going to need with custom tags and headers per every page being probably at the top of that and URLs. You know, it'll be interesting. I, I haven't seen it online. Is is a fully a full checklist of all of the HTML elements necessary for optimization of a page and how the t- different e-commerce engine template pages, the product detail pages, actually fall into, for example, can- canonicalization. And we've experienced a terrible devil of a time with Xcart and canonicalization. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and yep. <laughs> it's, an, it's an ugly, <laughs> ugly thing, man. Especially when you're dealing with 20,000 products that all of a sudden... Not only have canonical problems, but they also have pagination problems, and you've got duplicate upon duplicate content mm. out there. Um, not to kind of <laughs> share. Why that. I wasn't oh. here for that. 
<laughs> but um I mean, I, I, having a chart going across of, okay, I mean, it has to be up to date on the most ver- recent versions, but just sure. seeing which ones, almost like the comparison chart, you know, yeah. which ones actually fire on. Is that something you'd be interested in developing for us, Corey? <laughs> <laughs> Someone needs to make it. Someone <laughs> needs to do <laughs> it. I like it. Yeah. It'd be very useful. Absolutely. So um, without that chart, we have to, we as SEOs have to find our way and, and know, you know, good good methodology when we see it. we came across one uh, platform that uh, literally I mean and this is just CMS that literally had to have uh, custom tags for every head component of a page uh, you literally had to do it manually at the per page level so if you want a rel author right sure. you, you literally had to code the dynamic template to be able to have that tag so it's almost like you're hand coding in reverse <laughs> you got a cms but now you have to put everything back it's like if you were writing from notepad you know mm-hmm. um sometimes these cms's take a turn to the dark side <laughs> where i mean it tries to get so much flex- so much flexibility it gets you into trouble so I mean, what have you seen from common mistakes uh, inside of e-commerce SEO whenever it comes down to different platforms like that? Uh, We certainly have a litany of stuff that we've seen, but can you share some of the stuff uh, that you've witnessed over the years? Sure, yeah. The the biggest one's always just funkiness with duplicate pages going in there. If it's the filters for the product listing, you know, maybe someone's got the sort ascending versus descending or two different pages in the search index, that's a big problem. Uh, and almost everyone, it seems like, has something like that by default if they come to us. And, and all they have to do is just a site colon search in Google and start thumbing through what shouldn't be there and what's right. duplicated. But nobody does. Uh, by yeah. far the most common. Yeah, absolutely. And it's just spider the spider ability of the entire administration console. We saw we saw one time an entire help tool set of the application was indexed and spiderable, so the, the oh, lion's oh. share of the pages <laughs> of the site were how to help the user administrate their own website. <laughs> that, didn't yep. go, that didn't go well. <laughs> so um, uh, another question. Tom, you had another question regarding SEO. Yeah, so uh, a lot of se- Christmas is a few months away, so uh, there's going to be a lot of Christmas stuff going on, but what about those Christmas items that are not going to be available in February. So what do you do with like out of stock seasonal items, that sort of stuff with uh, e-commerce SEO stuff? Yeah, it's a great question. It's if I'm being totally honest, it's not one I've I've really tackled much. Uh, <laughs> so I that's don't know. I, asked, I think Corey. I would have to test it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that, that's my real answer to it. Uh, Corey, we're Corey, we're trying to get some free consulting here. <laughs> yeah, what should we do? Yeah. <laughs> we built this entire show around trying to pull some good quality consult. You know, it's, yeah. it's actually funny you say that because I I. Even All though, <laughs> even though we're not an e-commerce site, we run into the same issue like yeah. events. So, oh, you know, yeah. we'll publish about an event, and there's really nothing in Google for expiring content. You no. know, if we take it down, we get a 404, and it's like, okay, should we redirect that? What mm-hmm. should we do? And mm-hmm. pr- yeah. pretty much, yeah, we, that's something I have worked yeah. with with just events that don't come back. Yeah, uh, and I do 404 those, and that seems to be the right answer from everything we've tried. Nice. Yeah. So. There, there's an answer. All right. All right. There we go. <laughs> well, then I'm doing the right thing. <laughs> You're coddling him, Corey. Don't do that. Oh. No, I didn't do it because I was smart. <laughs> <laughs> um, hey, SSL certificates are one of the most important features in having an e-commerce site right now. Sure. Um, should a business just secure their e-commerce environment or should they should they secure their entire site? What, what are your thoughts there? I, I agree with Matt Cutts on that one, actually. For I don't always, but just secure the whole site. Yeah. There's no reason not to. Uh, it's come up. It, people are still debating. Like I think it only correlated like two percent mm-hmm. uh, in one blog post, and it's like, dude, just just do it. Do it. You, do it's it. already there. You've already got the certificate. That poses more problems than it's worth trying yeah. to separate it out. Yeah, and with yeah. The, the ranking boost that they're talking about, how they're going to be improving here in the next yeah. uh, next year or so. That might as well just go ahead and do it all. Yep. Sure. So are, are you regularly uh, securing sites that you roll out regularly? Yeah. And, you know, I don't put it too high on the list, mm-hmm. but if you go through, like, the ranking factors, you got a lot of things that are just kind of iffy, but they're not things that would hurt. Yep. Like, SSL, I think, is a little more concrete because we've talked about it a lot. There's studies. I think Dr. Pete just published something on Moz that yep. supported it, uh, or at least supported the ends of, of what they're accomplishing here. And it's just, why not with those factors? 
Like you don't have to put them very high on the priority list, but I would absolutely do them because yeah. it's competitive, you know. Absolutely. Like everyone's trying to get every signal they can. Um, a, a number of questions that we have here, and we'll pick pick one from our, our list here. Um, uh, how important have you seen video as a e commerce uh, e commerce value uh, for SEO as well as conversion for for e commerce? Sure, uh, it can be useful. It can be a distraction for conversions. But for SEO, it's big, and I actually I have this is actually one of my my favorite little secrets here that I I will disclose that I didn't see it talked about much when it happened. Mm-hmm. But when Panda 2.5 came out, uh, I think Barry Schwartz posted on Search Engine Land uh, the usual like winners and losers as they do. I think it comes from search metrics. They yeah. look at really high traffic sites and yep. what changed. Um, and when Panda 2.5 came out specifically, there was a huge departure of all sites with video went way up and all sites without video went way down. Um, And there were big content portals, all of them. For some reason, they were looking at that vertical specifically. Um, But I've pointed back to that with my clients who are questioning, should we do video? Is there anything? It's like, well, you can look at this and we we can't Mm -hmm. be sure, but I think it's going to help. There's all these signals that talk about unique value and it doesn't necessarily mean a thousand words. It could mean a video. Uh, And I think that's a very good theory honestly like I, I can't prove it but I don't see why you wouldn't at this stage in the game all the people that are winning seem to be doing it yeah but the challenge is obviously from a budget standpoint and yes. especially for e-commerce well there, there's actually some really good tools out there there's a couple of companies that will do templatized videos Excellent. so you can actually put in a picture put in description everything else mm-hmm. and then they can mass produce like 2000 videos. That's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Oh, wow. You can. And they still get expensive. I think uh, yeah. when we talked to a while back, it was like Sunday Sky. They the thousands, tens, hundreds of thousands of dollars potentially to implement even the automated solutions wow. because I don't know, they're trying to do value ads where they would customize the experience as well. Sure. Um, uh, on many of these. So, but see, it, see, every time there's a, a, a authentic factor is going to be exploited and it's going to be yep. tried to game, be gamed and you know all power to them if they can if they can do that type of automation fantastic because there's there's absolutely a sector of the e-commerce environment that needs that but boy i mean you know that's as soon as that happens then google decides yep that's enough that's enough of that yep we, this is why we can't have nice things <laughs> <laughs> it always ruins it <laughs> Hey, uh, I wanted to jump into uh, Google ranking factors and break away from SEO, uh, Google SEO, or e-commerce SEO here for a second. Sure. Um, and it certainly, we really wanted to showcase um, uh, your tool online. Um, it's a fantastic tool, and uh, we'll have a link on the, on the edge as well. Um, you developed this online tool to review ranking factors for Google, but you did something different. You actually showed the myths as well as the concrete factors that were also perceived as, you know, as uh, the myths that were perceived as factors, and you're trying to do a, a bit of debunking as well. So you're collecting all of these concepts, 271 factors, and you're, you're kind of preening through them with a, you know, true or false type of uh, methodology here. Um, The myths were obviously something we wanted to pull up and and before anything else go through because we want to demystify SEO for our listeners regularly. Would you, would you be ready to kind of jump through uh, a couple key uh, comments about some of the myths that we came up with your, on your tool? Sure. Oh man, I'm hoping they're all labeled right. (laughs) Let's do this. All right. All right. Here, 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 let's uh, go through the gauntlet here. And and I think I want to have everybody kind of jump into this. And uh, we've got the tool online and we're going to kind of uh, adjust to myths. Uh, Doug, if you you could be so kind. The cool thing is I got a cool cool scroll bar and I'll go all the way over to myths. And what I want to do is kind of run through some of the things that people still believe our ranking factors, right, that we want to kick out the door. And uh, we're going to have Corey champion this too. So, sure. Miss, positive on-page factors, okay? These are uh, – and they have negative on-page factors, positive off, off-page factors, and negative off-page factors. So, po- positive on-page myths, right? Meta keywords. Yes. I think I think the entire SEO community is finally understanding that yeah. don't put keywords in your pages. It's not, it's been completely deprecated. There's nothing there, but um, I mean, how often do you see that? Uh, we just removed them from a new client. You did, <laughs> yes. 
Yeah, and they had like That's a thousand sound. keywords in in in, in yes. the bloody. Yeah. Absolutely, it's a great way to show your competitors what keywords you're going after. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> show, show me show me your Texas Hold'em <laughs> cards before we actually play. And, and that's one of the main reasons. It was also just the, the game and ship was out, uh, actually out there. Um, but another myth you had there was Google Analytics, utilizing Google Analytics. I mean, can you tell me about that? Is that still a perception that if you use Google Analytics, you're evidently going to rank higher? I mean, uh, at what, what point in time was that even a factor of, of consideration? It wasn't. It really wasn't. And, you know, it's funny because it is a factor. If you watch the Matt Cutts videos and are as much a fan of these as I am, I think he's done this maybe two dozen times. Uh, people are like, no, seriously, guys, yeah. AdWords is not going to make you rank factor. Yeah, exactly. Analytics isn't. None of our products. There's no conspiracy. Yep. Um, and actually, what's funny is when I was putting this together, it began with me kind of thumbing through all the other resources and not being happy with them. And I think that actually came from stated as fact in a list of somebody trying to hit 200. Oh, you serious? Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know which, and I, I may be wrong. But uh, <laughs> most of these came from that sort of environment yeah. where it was like, man, like I'm trying to build like my best composite of these and at first it wasn't going to be a fact check and that was why it became one well you certainly have it cite, uh, cited out in all of the different uh, uh, excerpts that you have for these for these uh, myths as well as concrete factors are all cited uh, res- respectively um, yep. Google Search Console yeah all the Google products you had listed there as, as, as myths the, it, using them will not get you ranking factors Yep. And I, I mean, hell, I Googled around. I, I thought I'd see if there were some studies. Maybe somebody has some crazy um, like SEO black hat where mm-hmm. they have a conspiracy that they pulled it off. I couldn't even find that. <laughs> no, nobody trying to claim it for real. It's almost like a myth just that paranoia. never got really supported, but it just kind of floated out sure. there. Right. Because and it, no it fact ran. behind it. Yep. So dedicated IPs, using AdSense, keywords in the HTML comments, keywords in the CSS and JavaScripts, all these things are myths. They're not there. Even the keywords in classes, names, and IDs inside of CSS, uh, it, it, there's nothing. There's no value in SEO whatsoever. Uh, you also said pos- positive sentiment inside of comments were also a myth. And, I mean, yeah, absolutely. Why in the world would you be able to be ranking higher? I mean, let's, let's look at the common sense approach. If people are mm-hmm. saying good things about your page, okay, and that one's interesting too because there's actually a complementing not myth to that where they actually talked about e-commerce reviews mm-hmm. having sentiment mattering there, and they had to backpedal and say, "No, guys, slow down. It's not everything <laughs> I've written on your site everywhere. Yeah, it's just the reviews. Yeah, and just for that. Very good. Um, the ne- the negative on page myths that are out there: uh, outbound links. Talk about that for a second. Yeah, uh, well, it's a, a big theory that you shouldn't link out uh, to anybody. Yeah. And it's another one that's been debunked like crazy. Mm-hmm. And there's, there's patents and there's everything talking about the positive of linking out even. Uh, but yeah. Yeah, I would say I, that's still a major one, I think, especially for a lot of news outlets. They, they don't like to link out to anybody. Mm-hmm. And uh, what's funny is uh, years ago, years ago, I used to not. I used to have like a redirect, you know, for that because the marketing that tech blog I have. Sure. I found links on every single thing. Mm-hmm. And a, a few years ago, I dropped that. And then I dropped the no follow. And <laughs> nothing happened. I was yeah. like, it w- I mean, nothing. It was no change to my site over the next few weeks whatsoever. So I was like, well, yeah. I'm just going to keep them. And now I even, I mean, even behind on broken links. But I still mm-hmm. rank incredibly well. Mm-hmm. But I do maintenance every once in a while and try to capture them. But yeah. Uh-huh. Excellent. All right, yeah. and, and missing robots text files. How about that? Yeah, um, people were worried about it. I think it was John Mueller. I don't have it in front of me right now here, but it was. Yeah, um, came out and said, "Just don't worry about it. Yep. It's fine." John Mueller. Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll certainly help you out there. We got we're we're traipsing through it right now. Positive off page myth that uh, we wanted to reference: uh, keyword link titles, brand name citation, backlinks, backlinks from dot edu's. All mm-hmm. right. Now, let's talk about that for a second, because that was a, a gamesmanship. In fact, to the degree where uh, some marketing companies were trying to, I think it was, oh, yeah, it was Overture.com. Mm-hmm. They were actually trying to get uh, students to link back to them from their college pages, their work pages, their their, page, their blog pages, whatever mm-hmm. they had, to try to get an Overture link. And they were paying 50 bucks or a free pizza oh or something God. like that. I, I guarantee you that's what was happening. And, and they were juicing the system. Sure. They for, were, yeah. for one, college students, that's way too much money. <laughs> like, but if you give them free pizza, 
<laughs> they'll go backflips. Do you recall that, uh, Corey? I do, I do. It's it was chaos, and I mean, there's still people who sell EDU links. I think no, like, even like our AHRF subscription will yep. flag EDU links for you separately. Yep. Uh, <laughs> that, that's fine. Um, one thing I think it's important to really highlight with this too. My academic background as a systems designer, I look at this as Google is a series of functions that are independent of one another, mm-hmm. and I don't believe, and I don't think I've seen anything, and it's been directly debunked in that by Matt Cutts right. and other places, that they're specifically going out of their way for an EDU, but it could also be a function of a lot of people linked to academic research. Those sites don't link out very much. There right. is a lot of authority that kind of pulls up there. Gotcha. Um, so it still can help a lot, but it's not a factor. Yep, Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, negative off-page myths as well. Building links. Well, we certainly, I mean, if anybody's still trying to do link building services, right? Uh-huh. Um, and not, and again, not in respect to some of the other companies that we've, we've interviewed that actually are doing authentic link inbound marketing. That's a whole different beast. But the link farms are dead. Yes. Stop using them. And mm-hmm. we, we, inter- we inherit, we still inherit clients. Sure. That have have this this type of a, gr- a gross global manufactured link pool that is completely fabricated. You've got to stop, and there's, there's no value there whatsoever. Um, as well as uh, microsites, right? So microsites to lift up certain keyword values and try to string them all together. It's, uh-huh. it's just not going to work. And that's been, I mean that's been five years, and this stuff has been has been dismissed by Google. Um, yep. Any other myths that you wanted to cover there? No, I think that does it pretty well. There's a lot of them. But oh, they're huge. They're worth a read. Absolutely. Well, I mean, it's very, it's entertaining. It truly is pulling up uh, the, the concrete as opposed to the the, the myth. Now, uh, I do want to ask you: Can you uh, give us some some aha moments that you had from discovering some of the concrete pieces uh, that you've put forth on that that ranking factor sheet? Yeah, uh, the concrete stuff I was pretty reserved with, so there's nothing that really blew me away there, but some things uh, kind of did. I, I am slowly becoming a believer in one thing that's just what now is being described as the whole AI initiative, the deep learning, uh, the, the fact that that's been involved for a long time, uh, and there was a lot about just uh, A-B testing results and how it performs. Yeah. It's very, very simple. It's what we do as marketers in like the most base, pure form. I think it's disingenuous that when all this Google AI stuff came out, that people were assuming Google will start testing you and reacting. It's like, no, they won't. That's what they've been doing since the beginning, if they had any idea of what they were ever doing. Uh, so I think task completion time being a factor uh, was a really interesting one, and there's a lot of evidence for it. Um, task so. completion. Go ahead and elaborate that for the, for the listeners. Absolutely. Uh, I actually, now that I look at it, I have it as a maybe, simply because it's one you never hear people talk about. But David Meese uh, with Google right. had a long paper on this, and there was a lot more on it, too. Uh, and it just talks about testing and reacting dynamically. So in real time, mm-hmm. you would search for something, and mm-hmm. hey, if this query is not performing the way we think, let's just shuffle the weighting of the different factors a little bit. Let's maybe reward this a little bit more than this on this query. Mm-hmm. And you already see that kind of behavior talked about with like this is a commercial query versus this isn't. Mm-hmm. But I, I think it's more granular than that. I think it already occurs. Uh, and that was pretty interesting to me to just kind of go down that rabbit hole where I hadn't before. Hmm. Well, I mean, there's certainly a lot of conversation coming out of SMX as well as advanced uh, regarding the rank brain and the AI. Yes. Um, you know, there's there's... There's a lot of cha- people challenged with the concept of rank brain, and I mean, Dr. Pete certainly was an advocate. Mm-hmm. Uh, in fact, uh, I, in the same camp that you're 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 speaking of, is that it's already there. Mm-hmm. Yep, it's already been there, and they're just tooling it up a little bit more. But it's it's behavior a- analysis, it's understanding uh, different intent, mm-hmm. you know, and being able to understand what type of content can be provided based on intent as opposed to just. Uh, you know, the, 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 I won't say generic, but the, the original ranking factors that they've been trying to hone and, and, and penalize against, right? These are things that, that they've been learning all the while, and they're just using it as an additional factor now. It's not going to monopolize the entire 
SEO environment. You're not, I mean, we're not going to be put out of jobs. I mean, it really gets yeah. back down to actually, Doug, it gets back to real world marketing. It gets down to the real brass tacks, authentic content. You yep. Know? Absolutely. Oh, well, uh, we, yeah. Uh, one of our, one of our, uh, Thanks for that contribution there, Doug. <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Brief but stellar. Uh, well, you know, you know what I love about that. But to your point, right? I, I, there are sites that rank absolutely fantastic that don't invest anything in SEO. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. And it's because of the quality of the content, the absolutely. promotion capability of the person over it, mm-hmm. the distribution uh-huh. channels that they're using, and everything else. And and that's what I mean. It, you know. When we're talking about SEO, the mm-hmm. investment in SEO is worth it. When you're competing with those guys, yeah, absolutely. you know, when you're competing, when you're a small e-commerce site and you're trying to compete against a giant, uh, that's when you really need to comb through all of these issues and try to knock them all out and keep optimizing everything. And so SEO is always a good investment, but if you're already winning, mm-hmm. <laughs> You know, if you're like Guy Kawasaki, I doubt he optimizes his website, right? He asked yeah. us to optimize one of his a long time ago. That, yeah, um, yeah, absolutely. You're absolutely right. So, I mean, SEO is. Are you saying SEO is for the little guys? I think so. Yeah. I, I well, and I think it's for the big guys that have huge dollars to compete with one sure. another too. Sure, you know that you're you're you've got a. If, you, if, that, if you if and and if you can eke out that ten percent, fifteen percent, that oh my equates god, equates into millions huge. or billions of dollars of revenue. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, so uh, so we certainly want a contract like that coming up. So if, you, if you're interested, <laughs> was it, was that better than a yup? By yeah. the way, thank you. I <laughs> okay. appreciate. You're that. welcome. It's almost like you were doing something else there for a second. I was. <laughs> okay, I was, I was looking for Pokemon in the. <laughs> Stop it! <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh God, that will not rear its ugly head on this. Uh... <laughs> did, you, did you hear Corey? <laughs> oh God, <laughs> you, we are not Pokemon supporters. I'm here. not either. Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't know. I'm beginning to wonder. Okay, hey, uh, we're going to come back and, and talk to Corey a little bit more about about uh, the the discussion regarding success not being a commodity uh you, you up for that uh, conversation here Corey? yes definitely Ex- excellent all right uh, so coming up right after this thanks for coming back on the uh, on the second segment Corey. absolutely well hey you 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 recently uh, wrote an article uh in may of this year and it really spoke to me and i, I wanted to showcase it on the show the the title of the blog was uh success is not a commodity and um you know in, in the vein of of uh just just wanting to share with you, our listeners uh, who you are and, and what your intent was on the article. I mean, you certainly are uh, a, a, a good writer, but I wanted to understand before we got dug into the content, what your intent was of that article itself. What inspired you to write it? <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, it's interesting you highlight that because that article did terrible, uh, <laughs> but I won't <laughs> stop flaunting it. Uh, and linking it to people because yep. it was kind of a big passion project for me. That uh, I bet. Uh, yeah, it, it came after I had. A, I think we lost a bid to a client, and uh, this hasn't happened to me much. But it, people get really emotional about their marketing. You know, they're investing a lot of money in their business, and this is such an opaque thing. And right. There's so many people that are just shysters out there, and uh, this is one client who uh, was talking to me and they got really, really upset with me all of a sudden. It just kind of came out of the blue. And they were comparing me to this kind of one of like the magic ebook sellers that like, you know what, I read this in an ebook, and they're promising <laughs> me this and this, yeah. and uh, you're not. You're just giving me a process, uh, was, was literally what they told me. Uh, and I, it, at first, like, I, I sit back a second. I'm like, well, it's, we're not just offering a process. I mean, we got a ton of case studies like any good agency should have, and mm-hmm. we are as transparent as we can be with what we're doing and our results and everything else. But that, that wasn't really what they were looking for. I started to realize it was the, the other guy, the, the guy who was actually, I'm pretty sure, ripping off people in mass. And because we weren't that, mm-hmm. they were, were upset with us. They were suspect, weren't they? We were the shysters here. Right. And yeah, I don't know. It, it was really upsetting to me. And there's, there's been a few moments you know, in being a business owner where I just wake up in the middle of the night in a cold sweat like, this is really upsetting to me that people are doing this and it's horrible for them. Mm-hmm. It's horrible for me and people in my position. Um, so I just started spelling it out. Yeah. Success is not a commodity. Like you still need to work hard. Like there are tricks, but you've got to test it. I think I tweeted something this week that was like one of the most common 
conversion tips, which was have a short email subject, and my short email subject was performing really, really war- poor. Mm-hmm. And by comparison, uh, yeah, like if I had just read that on a blog, if someone had just given me a magic ebook that like just buy this and use my formula and you'll be rich, uh, which you hear so often in, in this industry, that that would never have worked for anybody, right? Uh, because they wouldn't have tested, they wouldn't have known that their audience wanted the longer subject line, mm-hmm. or they wanted something else. Um, so that was it. So uh, you, 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 there's a number of key points that you said in, in that introduction there, and, and one of the one of your points in the the blog post as well was, um, and I'll, I'll I'll quote you here: When it comes to online marketing for your business, what do you impulsively want? If you're like most, you want to want the largest number that someone can manage to slap on a proposal with a straight face with no risk at all, and you want it now. Well, I mean. I mean, that, therein lies a particular factor that really got caught my attention is that inside digital marketing, all right, it's, and, and it is opaque and it is unknown. And there's, and, and uh, granted, the the industry is increasing aware. I, I should say the consumer base of our industry is raising awareness, and they're getting more and more savvy. And we certainly appreciate that because no more, no longer are we having to even educate on the concept of SEO. It's there, it's out there, and it's fantastic that it's growing. But along with that comes the 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 opportunities that shouldn't be looked on as as opportunities uh, because of so many things that could be done. It doesn't mean that they should be done. They shouldn't be. You know, all the all the sales on the ship be unfurled at the same time and having these huge budget numbers to yeah. to put before a, a a client just because you can i mean it's it's right now in the, the industry is is pretty mature it's got some great tool sets we got also have have some great transparency but at the same time you know you can you can sell to the high heavens right with and if you actually are tying into some sort of guarantee of success because of all these strategy points, right? Um, it's it, it gets you into a really difficult position because you it, it gets back to the point of really should you be selling this for the best interests of that client, right? Absolutely. So you referred to Maslow's law of a hierarchy of needs, and I don't know if uh, for the listeners that don't know this, uh, this was what really really struck me because guess what? This is also the same type of uh, Maslow's law is also the same type of of concept when you're dealing with the buyer's journey. Whenever they're dealing, with, you're writing different t- levels of content. It's food, we need food. We do. I, I, oh yeah, exactly. We do. Well, I mean, <laughs> the first wrong the first wrong is physiological: breathing, water, water, sleep. Homeostasis, excretion. There you go, Doug. Uh, as well. As oh, thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> and then well, next, I the candle, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the next level is safety, the security of body, of employment, of resources, of morality, and family. The next level up is love, belonging, friendship, family, right? Intimacy, esteem is the next level up. Self-esteem, confidence, achievement, respect for others, respect by others. And the, and the top one is self-actualization. That's where moral and morality, creativity, spontaneity, problem solving, lack of prejudice, and acceptance of facts come. It's, and they build upon each other. If you don't have one of those earlier rungs, you can't get to that top rung. Well, the, the, fact, the, the fact of the matter is that this absolutely applies to how people buy and search online they have a problem they go through the trust factors to actually de- decide who is is uh who's the best match for them but your your content what you're talking about in this blog was really the the way we should be selling is not all the physiologicals and all of the all the pieces that need to fit it needs to be actually inverted and the and the first thing that you should be selling to is the moral equivalent of uh, and the moral point of should we be selling this to this client for their needs and we went through a perfect exercise we're actually putting together a a scope of a marketing need for one of our clients and part of this is actually the sniff test is their content or i should say is their product their service marketable should that be done first before, and should you have the, the the level of ethics to actually bring to them yeah, that that truth before trying to sell them all the pieces of the rainbow of how to market something? Do, do you see where I'm see you know, see where I'm going there? Definitely, definitely, and that's that's not easy to do uh, for someone selling marketing products to say no to money. It's kind of exactly. the, the complete inverse to how we're wired to 
run a business or to sell anything. But that's absolutely right. I think that it's it's a real problem. It's rampant because people begin with those baser level things that they're looking for, and there is such an industry just ready to prey into just those base things we see in ads for yogurt and mm-hmm. like Coca Cola, and it's like that's fine. But when you're building a marketing program, it's it needs to go deeper. And if that's as deep as you're willing to make it, it's just what magic formula can somebody sell me? Right. And you're not going to get very far. If, if you're just selling tactics and, 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 and those tactics are just enough to, to get by and you're selling you know, world of tactics, right? You're yep. not really piercing that veil. You're not getting to the point of, should this be done this way? And what does it mean? At, at the same time, you also broke it down of, you know, uh, SEO, right? And, and you pulled it back into SEO, which was a great, connection for me is that you said that the truth is this is the truth in SEO you repeatedly help businesses rank number one for the most absurdly competitive phrases in Google um, but uh, the honest truth is that you can't guarantee it for them you know no one can right and you yeah. think about what Google wants is is the purpose of creating all of these signals to rank websites well the purpose is to model relevance and popularity as it as if as it exists all, offline the, the fact of the matter is ranking itself is not the 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 goal and it's not the success criteria conversions certainly are but but how what's it worth to get to those conversions and is it worth breaking the bank of a client to get all those tactics together when they're not ready for it so i mean there's, there's there's an honest approach that needs to happen as a marketer you need to not only stare, yourself, stare at yourself in the mirror, but you mm-hmm. need to you know, look and have the client look at themselves. And the, are you ready to do this? Right? Yes. Are you ready to be able to put this type of effort and investment into it, and and be you know, the governor of of your own success? If if they're just looking for cheap tactics, or they're just looking for yeah, this is what I'm supposed to do, and they're not really wanting to jump full fledged into an earnest, authentic pursuit of of you know, uh, of communication, of of uh, uh, you know, b- behavior improvement on their on their website. Sure. Then there's there's there's. I mean, you're selling you're selling an empty room. You know. Yep, and not only that, because there there are those two opposing forces that you mentioned there. Like we we want to lead a brand to where they need to be, and on their end, they want to safeguard their investment. Um, so yeah, something that is no risk, instant. It gives results. That's perfect. That's what I wanted. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So, that's what everybody wants, right? Yeah. So it raises questions of where do I draw lines? Because someone's going to come and they're going to ask for that, even if that's not what I, I position us as, and they're going to keep driving for it. Like, okay, but but within two months, you can promise me this, right? Hmm. It's like, well, no, not really. It, and it's it's difficult because you start to feel like, you know, maybe I could say yes, and maybe I could break our rules, and mm-hmm. it could work out for them. There's a very good chance it will. And maybe the ends justify the means. It's very easy uh. to step over that line and say yes, because that's exactly what that client I, wants to hear. One of the things that we've done, because we, we, I, I wouldn't say we've struggled this with with this from maybe selling someone the wrong services, mm-hmm. but what we've done a lot of times is the client thinks they need something, and then we get in there. So the perfect example that I always give people is um, – they need content services. But then when we start to talk to them about, you know, developing that content, they don't understand what their brand voice is. They don't understand what their competitive competition is. They don't understand, you know, what, what their differentiators are, what their clients are asking for. They don't understand any of that. Right. And so then we have to back up and, and start, you know, with, with brand surveys. And so I'm going to give my, you know, my business partner is kudos on this, but she developed a marketing maturity model and Mm -hmm. it's basically 10 stages. Mm -hmm. And when we sit down with a client, we basically evaluate what stage they're they're at. I love that. And then we start there and then bring them through. And that's, that's a bit of that self actualization mirror right there. You're not ready for all of that. That's exact. That's exactly it. And without saying it in a rude way, you know, and being able to move them along, like we can still move sure. them, even if they're like our last, you know, our last step is, right. you know, conversion optimization. Right. Well, obviously, if you have everything else in place, there's probably ways that you can increase your conversion rates. Right. And there's ways that, you, you know, you can uh, the strategies that you can deploy for that. And so and, uh-huh. and the first stage is obviously just 
basic brand, you know, but, but, uh, I, you know, that's one way that we've kind of gotten mm-hmm. out of that. And, and it's a comfortable conversation with the client rather than, you know, uncomfortable because you start you're at, trying to dissuade them from something that they've already, that's exactly it. You start ebooked themselves. into. that's exactly <laughs> it. That's exactly <laughs> it. When you start asking them these pointed questions right. on each stage of their maturity, they can't answer them. Right. And that's when you say, okay, well, you, I understand you read this ebook mm-hmm. and this is really important, right. but we have to back it up. You know, we have to go back a few steps. Yeah, absolutely. Sure. Um, I mean, the, the, the key points of the article, there's no make me rich button. Okay. And no magic formula sure. from digital marketing is going to rain manna from heaven into an organization. There's, I mean, we offer, we usually use the, the, the analogy of stock portfolios that there's some low yield, but strong growth type of stocks inside huh. of SEO that you can do. Right. But and as well as some quick, quick, more quicker uh, hits like PPC. But uh, I mean, you must understand where you are in that maturity model. You're absolutely right. And, and not, not get sold by the, the companies out there that want to sell you that dollar cheap fix because there's plenty of those, uh, those predators out there that can easily sell you something. So as you're, as you're evaluating marketing budgets and evaluating different proposals, right? Look past what the dollars are and look past, are they selling you just tactics or are they actually looking, looking deeper into the results that they're trying to achieve with those tactics and does that match what you're, what you're really needing right now? You know, because there's a, there's a heck of a lot of uh, evolution that you need to do in your own company. Anyway, that, that's, that's, uh, that was interesting, and I just wanted to bring that to the, to the, to the, to the focus, Corey. I appreciate the article, and that, that kind of real and authentic communication needs to happen more over inside of digital marketing spheres, and, and it, it doesn't. It usually, you're, you're usually getting into sens- sensational headlines of, you know, some, some, uh, some, something that's happening, trending, and, and it, it does need, more marketers need to take a pause and say, okay, should I be doing this? As opposed to, yeah, yeah, let's just jump into the next curve there. Completely agree. All right. So the success you want just can't simply be bought. And that's the, that's the end of that, <laughs> that particular thing. All right. I uh, appreciate it, uh, Corey. Any last thoughts uh, in, in regards to uh, anything that we want to share with you, share with the listeners online? Well, that's that's been great. You went through some of my favorite stuff here already. Uh, maybe the one last thing. We published what we do with all of this information in the ranking check mm-hmm. factors on our site, all of our checklists. So we've got 24 checklists that we gave, that became from 271 ranking factors. Right. And that's all out there on the site. The, the beginning of each is free. Um, so you can get a good feel for everything that we do when we do audits right in front of you so no, it's a beautiful thing he has a lot of tools yep. there and we highly recommend you give north cut a look and and they've got some great tool sets there to to display uh it's northcut.com can they can they track you on twitter absolutely uh Corey underscore Northcuts or Northcut HQ for the agency. Oh, very cool. Very cool. All right. Uh, and uh, last thoughts to uh, other digital marketers that are in in this space. Uh, uh, give me one poignant uh, argument out there. Oh, man. Can I just say success isn't a commodity? <laughs> yeah, see? See how, <laughs> I te- see how I teed that up for you? That was fantastic. That was perfect. Perfect. <laughs> well played. All right. Hey, uh, thank you so much, and uh, we'll be sure to, sure to drop by, uh, maybe not maybe not unannounced, but uh, next time we're up in Chicago. It's only a little like while. That. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, we like love to come by and uh, and uh, meet. Uh, all right. So that is Corey, Corey uh, Northcutt of Northcutt. Thanks so much. Uh, <laughs>